Okay, I've been kind of mentally preparing myself for how I'm going to go up on the roof, and the idea is I only want to go up there one time. I don't want to go up more than once, because getting off the ladder onto the roof is kind of a dangerous point. So, what do I need? I'm going to be hammer drilling. First of all, we're going to be putting up this antenna here. I'm going to need the hammer drill up there. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the roof, and then without the extension cord. And then later I'm going to grab the extension cord from, from when I threw it up there, and then connect them. All the things I need, hammer, I'm going to be hammering that pin in right there, so you'll need a hammer. I'm going to need those cutters because I'm going to have to cut the little zip ties off the antenna. I don't want to do it before I get up there because then I'll have a mess. So I'm going to carry the hammer, the cutters, the wire cutters. That's going to be my insulator in between the antenna and the chimney. I'm going to have some, it's a paracord. Not the best stuff in the world for insulation. It, it's not weatherproof or anything, but I'm going to use it to get started. I'm going to need my drill bit also. I don't want to put the drill bit in there until I'm up there in case I fall on it or something. It's like a little dagger, you know. I'll do that once I get up there. Um, I'm wearing uh, work pants. Climb around on the roof. I'm going to... Uh, I like this. I'm going to have a, a belt loop for my hammer. <laughs> I've never really needed this, but now I do. That doesn't get in the way. All right, I am really dreading doing this. The last thing in the world I want to do is get in my house. It's cold outside. But let's get this done. Let's get this doublet up. It's nice to have this pocket here for this very reason. That way when I'm climbing, I'm hands-free. So what we are doing is we're going from my chimney, I'm going to go across here and maybe attach to the fence or the tree, I'm not sure. Once it's on the chimney and, and down, I will decide. I also have a tower there I might be able to connect it to, and I can bring it up and down, but it's basically a dipole that's going to go across the yard like that. Uh, here's the problem. My power is right here, but the way to get on the house is over there, so I'm going to have to take power cord and shoot it onto the roof somehow. I might be able to just sling it up there, you know. Okay, plan B. I'm going to tie this to the power cord and get it up there a lot safer than the way I was just doing it. Now I can tie this, carry it on over. Alright, so this is one of the least favorite things I like to do in the whole world. Threw my antenna up there. I'm actually not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of falls. Ha ha ha, I just thought of that joke. Alright, so get on my roof is pretty easy. The most dangerous part is getting from there to there. Um, it kind of, that's the iffy, you gotta be super careful. Yeah, I know someone should be here holding the ladder, but no one's here. I'll be careful. And there is my throw line. Now, I should be able to bring up my power cord. Okay, got the power cord up here, wrapped it around there so it won't slide right off the roof. It would suck. I got a, a visitor watching me. I'm glad that dog doesn't bark. Okay, now I've got power, got the drill. Shouldn't be too hard from here. I'm just putting a tiny little hole in there. Should not affect the structural integrity of that. It's a good locking mechanism. Be sure you actually set it to hammer drill. It has regular drill and regular in hammer. I spent about 30 minutes on hammer once, thinking it was in hammer drill when I first got it. Plugger in, thinking up high. Away. This eye hook has a Uh, 
that's what I'll be hammering. Alright, not gonna lie, you probably shouldn't be doing this into brick. Uh, it's probably a thing you're not supposed to do. Uh, but, here we are. Now, I'm not happy with this wire, this cordage. But now that all this hard stuff is done, I can, I can come back up here and replace this paracord if I had to. Got the paracord coming down and I threw this other end down. This copper wire on the MFJ really wants to kink on you. To be careful as you let it down there are a lot of kinks not bad um, I don't like how that was starting to crack but you know it's a it's a big structure I'm not worried about it. there's not gonna be that much pressure on it if it does I'll come back up and fix it okay it is done I would still call this a uh, semi temporary not a permanent antenna it's just kind of a it's, it's better than anything I've had at this house but now I'm ready to stretch out Hope there's no kinks or anything. Um, landed safely in this bush. Also wondering how ugly it's going to be. <laughs> I've read this antenna is a good compromise for for weird backyards. If you see my backyard, it's a it's sort of short and it slopes up. I don't want this big obtrusive tower in the back of it. I think they would make me take that down. Um, kind of have to live towards towards the inner city because I work at the, these big corporations and I don't want to do a lot of driving commuting so I have to you know I'd love to live out in the country and have lots of room but anyway this is where I am I, I also didn't want to do a lot of digging so I think this kind of antenna is good for those of us that want to get something decent up in the air but you don't want to have to dig for the radials you know and have a big big tower here it's also something that I can take down you see if if something happens and I needed to take down, all I have to do is disconnect it from there, wrap it up, tie it over here tightly, and it's gone, you know? And I can kind of modify it. I can go up there in the tree, I can attach to the fence. For right now, I'm going to go to the fence and see what happens. Okay, there's the feed point. Down. And remember, I can always take this down just by disconnecting it here. I don't want to do that. I can always bring it up higher by going into that tree. But this, this is what I was talking about I wanted. Now, I'm at the chimney, I'm down in the middle, now uh, see that pole? I can attach that to this antenna and push the apex up 30 feet. So all of this really worked out well for me. I didn't have any problems, any accidents. Uh, this is kludgy, I know, but for now it gets me where I want to be. I can take a lot of slack out of this by doing that. Just realize how much pressure is on that uh, eye bolt that I just put in. There's a lot of pressure on that. I don't like that, but now you can see when I want it to be, the stealthiness of this antenna it can al almost disappear. If I don't have my tower up and I don't have this stretched out, you can lay it down and be stealthy like 90% of the time. And I'm well aware of lightning issues. I'm basically not going to be connected. Uh, unless I'm operating, I'm just going to disconnect. And I'll probably bring it down most of the time, but up and down, that's what I can do now. Not bad. Okay, so that coax is in my base basement. 
I run it through that hole over there. I've got some Brillo pad, some copper Brillo pad. That way the mice, they're supposed to not be able to chew through that. That's why I have that there. Then I've got the support for this coax cable going down into the MFJ, what they call the line isolator, the MFJ915. Now they said in the manual to place this as close to the radio as possible. Now I've seen other people put it out there by the antenna, but the instructions say put it here. So I've got that going into the antenna tuner, and then I've got that going into my radio, and we're going to do a first test. This is my first ever attempt at tuning the doublet. Let's see what happens. I have, have a carrier, don't I? I forgot. I've got it on 3 watts. It looks like it's reflected as very low. Now let's go up and do a transmission at, looks like there's zero reflected power. Let's go up to 10 watts. CQ, CQ, CQ. Now we go to upper sideband. So I was getting zero reflected power. That's really good. I didn't even hardly hit tune. So let's see what happens here. Frequency in use. Is this frequency in use? The SWR meter is really low. That's good. I'm going to go up to... 30, 30 watts. Frequency in use. Is this frequency in use? I don't feel any burns. Frequency in use. Frequency in use. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ. CQ 20, November 9, Yankee Oscar, N9, YO. Australia, now New Zealand, it's just zero from that direction. So, I just, Sounds pretty uh, good. I'm not sure what's very clear. going on except, uh, you know, the normal doldrums at the bottom of the sunspot cycle. Anyway. What concerns me, I'll go down here to empty frequency. I'm on upper sideband. I'm on, I have 75% watts, 75% power. My forward power is only showing about 10. Frequency in use. Is this frequency in use? See? It should be way, the forward power should be way up there. Frequency in use. Is this frequency in use? Frequency in use. Is this frequency in use? Now, I just, I just don't know why I'm at 75% power, which should be about 75 watts. When I do it on FM, it says it'll go way up. Watch this. I'm on 75, but now I'm on upper sideband. CQ, CQ, CQ from N9YO, November 9, Yankee Oscar. It's only going up to about 10 forward power. Why? CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to 40 meters and see if the same thing happens. So I'll always draw the power down just in case. 5%, five, 5%, five maybe 4%. Now I'm going to go to 40 meters. Man, that sounds good, doesn't it? It's really good. I'm going to go way up here. Number 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ CQ. N9YO calling CQ CQ. It's just weird that I'm at 50% power and I'm only get 10. It says 10 forward here. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ. If anyone out there knows what's going on, please let me know. 
CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ. So I did an experiment. I decided to go with a key, and now I'm at 70% power, and watch. See, I'm getting a uh, forward power uh, 50%, or 50 to 60. See, I'm going to turn my power all the way up to 990, which is uh, should be 90, 90 watts. And you can see it's approaching 100 watts here. See if I can make a contact. No one was coming back to me on sideband. Now I have to say, this is the first time I've been able to run 100 watts or even above 40 or 50 watts and not a bit of, of uh, burn has hit me. Not a bit of tingling, nothing. I just ran almost 100 watts, what, what was it, 90? And I'm, I think this uh, line isolator is making a big difference. And like I said, I'm not sure if it should be here or if it should be out by, by the antenna, which would be better. I'm wondering if it's here, then this is, this is part of the antenna. Hmm. Anyway, it looks like I'm getting 100 watts forward when I do CW. I made my first contact. W7SAG, John Sager, Eagle, I Idaho. This app is pretty cool. Like you can hit look, look up and it fills everything out for you. I finally got this little keyboard. Um, I can't stand typing on here, so that made this a lot easier. I need to hit the uh, time off and then hit save, and I think I got it all. All right, um, that was my first contact on my... Uh, new antenna and I told him that too. Uh, we kept it real short. I just said I had a new antenna the second time he came back and said I was a uh, first I was a five. Oh look at that terrible handwriting. I was a five seven nine and then the sex second time I was a five nine nine So I'll put five seven nine in there. I don't care. All right guys. I hope you enjoyed this video